Kia ora, Brad here for the Run Experience. Today we're going to discuss a common foot condition that affects so many runners and it's probably the most common foot condition I see in my physio clinic, plantar fasciitis. If you're dealing with heel pain or know someone who is, you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm gonna share the common contributing factors, the best ways to manage and alleviate the discomfort caused by plantar fasciitis, plus, a couple of game-changing tips I'm gonna share at the end of this video, so be sure to stay with us. So, let's get started. Before we dive into the solutions, let's briefly understand what plantar fasciitis is. Now, plantar fasciitis is an inflammation of the plantar fascia. This is the thick band of tissue that runs along the bottom of your foot, connecting your heel to your toes. This condition commonly causes stabbing pain in the heel, especially with the first steps in the morning or after prolonged periods of rest. So now that we have a basic understanding, let's explore the best ways to manage plantar fasciitis. Tip number one, footwear. The first and most crucial step is to ensure you're wearing proper running footwear. Invest in shoes that provide adequate arch support, cushioning and stability for your individual needs. When you have plantar fasciitis brewing, you must avoid high heels or shoes with minimal support as they can worsen the symptoms as you are trying to manage the condition. Another management tool is a pair of orthotics to provide additional support of the arch within your shoes. Rather than shelling out hundreds, hundreds of dollars for a custom made pair, try a generic brand first. In fact, a recent study, which I'll put the links below, showed their referral to a podiatrist for a custom made insult does not lead to better outcomes compared to sham insoles or compared to usual GP lead here. Now don't get me wrong, I'm all for minimal shoes and barefoot running has a place I think in everybody's training regime, but just not when you have plantar fasciitis brewing or when you're trying to manage it. When you've got plantar fasciitis, you need adequate bracing and support to allow the symptoms to settle so you can treat and manage it. Tip two, stretching and strengthening exercises. Now engaging in regular stretching and strengthening exercises can significantly help manage plantar fasciitis and prevent it from appearing in the first place. So here are a few exercises you can try. Number one, calf stretches. Stand facing the wall, place your hands on the wall and extend one leg behind you, keeping the heel on the ground and the foot nice and straight. Lean forward so you can feel a stretch in the calf. Hold for 30 seconds, and repeat on the other side. We have to remember that all the fascia in our body is connected. So stretching the musculature and the fascial trains in the lower leg will have a relieving effect in the fascia at the bottom of your foot. To place more emphasis on the deeper lower calf muscles, the soleus and the fascia, bend the knee forward over the toe. This really hits the soleus and the surrounding fascia. Number two is the specific plantar fascia stretch. Sit on a chair, cross one leg off over the opposite thigh and hold the base of your toes and gently pull your toes back towards your shin so you feel a stretch in the arch of the foot. Hold for 30 seconds and repeat on the other side. This should be done on the side of the bed before weight bearing after a night's sleep. This can also be done standing and trying to bend your toes backwards on the wall while your heel is planted on the floor. Number three, toe work. Place a tea towel on the floor or a bit of paper and use your toes to scrunch it up towards you. Repeat this exercise for a few minutes daily to strengthen the muscles in your feet. Also look at some toe yoga exercises to progress the intrinsic and extrinsic strengthening of the foot and lower deep calf muscles. Having more strength in these smaller muscles will help support that plantar fascia sling at the bottom of the foot and help manage existing symptoms or prevent plantar fasciitis from happening in the first place. Another group of exercises is the big toe lifts and pushes into the ground. Try three reps with a three second hold and then repeat this with the four other toes. So a three second hold, lifting them separately from the big toe times three. Then push them into the ground for a three second hold times three. Number four, calf work. Look at calf raises, starting with the double raises, 10 to 15 times two. The trick here is to start with incapacity so you don't aggravate the plantar fascia symptoms. Look to spread the toes and don't shift your weight to the outside of the foot. Start on a level surface and then progress to off a step. Move into that plantar fascia, fascia stretch carefully as you strengthen. 
When able, look at eccentric movements. So up with two and then down with the aggravated foot slowly and controlled. And finally, progress to raising and lowering with one foot. Placing your toes on a small rolled up towel can help accentuate the range of the plantar fascia by extending the toes. Remember, consistency is key with these exercises. Start slowly and gradually increase the intensity as your foot strengthens. Tip three, another effective way to manage plantar fasciitis is through ice massage. Fill a plastic water bottle with water and freeze it. And once it's frozen, roll that bottle under your foot, applying gentle pressure for 10 to 15 minutes. This will help reduce inflammation and alleviate pain. You can do this several times a day, and especially after activities that exacerbate that plantar fascia pain. Some other management tools I use is rolling a ball around the heel and sole of the foot and also standing on a shakti mat for five minutes to help reduce tension and discomfort. Now tip four, what about getting a corticosteroid injection? Now look, this isn't good practice and it's usually only for impatient runners that are not prepared to conservatively manage this condition correctly. But our society likes to seek out quick fixes rather than take the longer journey that requires a little bit more work. I've got a study and I'll put the link below that shows no clinical difference at 12 and 52 weeks with an injection compared to just modifying activity and using a gel heel cup. Tip five, the most important aspect to managing and preventing plantar fasciitis in the first place is staying within your capacity. Now this means your general running training should only increase in duration by 15, maybe up to 20% per week with an adaptation week every fourth week or so. Also, be aware of other variables like hills and speed work. Remember, even the professionals only spend 10 to 20% of their week with intensity as the anaerobic training is catabolic. This means the body literally breaks down. If you don't have 80% of your week in that anaerobic, that anabolic repair build zone, then eventually you're going to break down. And plantar fasciitis is the most common overuse foot ailment in runners. So here is game changer number one. Now this is the 50-50 rule that I use for runners when they present with plantar fasciitis. We talk about the morning marker. How many minutes or steps is it sore first thing in the morning? The objective of the treatment and management is to reduce this. So if an athlete is running four times a week for 30 minutes and that morning marker pain is not subsiding with the management, then we cut the duration and frequency down by 50%. So we look at maybe two times a week for only 15 minutes. This continues until we get some improvement. Sometimes, if symptoms are very aggravated, runners will have to stop running completely and cross train, cycle, swim, using the cross trainer or the rower at the gym to maintain their cardiovascular fitness while we work on stretching, strengthening, and working on that plantar fascia. And I, I always add in core work as any loss of stability higher up that fascial train can contribute to plantar fasciitis symptoms. The next game changer, game changer number two, is using an old pair of running shoes as slippers. So wash an old pair and then wear them around the house. This will support and brace the foot and prevent you aggravating the symptoms when you're walking around that house. Otherwise, if you're barefoot or have got a poor pair of slippers, it's not gonna help. Bracing the arch of the foot while treating the symptoms is absolutely key. So what are your experiences with plantar fasciitis? Comment below. And if you want more info on this condition, check out an earlier video that the team did. Otherwise, get out there, earn your miles, manage those foot niggles, get strong, champion compassion, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.